two games. There's three football games the rest of the way. It's always funny the first time it gets phrased like that, and you're like, damn. Coming out of summer when the NFL kicks in and you're sitting down for red zone and there's just too many games and, you know, this running back you took in the eighth round of fantasy and you're just, you're all in and you you can't believe that every, feels like every Sunday for as long as you can think was, is going to have football. And now here we are, conference championship game. Sunday, 3 p.m., Niners, Eagles, Bengals, Chiefs. Uh, the 49ers came into the season well liked. The, the question was Trey Lance. Like, what was he going to be? He was going to get the, king, the, the keys to the kingdom. Jimmy G is what's been holding this team back. Let's give it to Trey Lance. And if he's anything, uh, the Niners have a, a real chance because they've got a ton of talent, right? They had Debo, Kittle. They've been able to run the ball with Shanahan, talented guys on defense. Uh Funky little year for them. They lost week one to the Bears. That was that uh, raining like all hell game. Um, and I, you know, not to give myself too much credit, I chewed it up and spit it out. I said, that, that's none of my business. They beat the Seahawks bigly. They lost to my Broncos 11 to 10. 11 to 10. There were nine three and outs in that game. Um, Melvin Gordon punches it in on the twelve play drive when we thought maybe the Bron- the Broncos were actually two and one and the Niners were one and two. NFL seasons are longer than you think. Uh, after that point, they beat the Rams, beat the Panthers. They lost at the Falcons. That's when I was really liking the Falcons. The Niners had a ton of injuries at this point, um, and the Falcons just had a power run game that was fun. They lose to the Chiefs. Chiefs just outpowered them. They were still getting healthy, and they still couldn't go toe-to-toe with them. Meanwhile, they were back to Jimmy G. Trey Lance was out instantly. And then they start to go. Uh... And now they are winners of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus two playoff games, winners of 12 in a row. Jimmy G out. Brock Purdy in. He doesn't know what losing feels like. They traded for Christian McCaffrey, which at the time... People weren't sure what to do with. There was rumors the Rams were in on McCaffrey, if you remember that, because they didn't have their first-round pick this year. So they kind of want to go all in and get him. And Sean McVay, the Rams, you know, Super Bowl Rams. The Niners outpaid them to get him, and everyone was like, well, all right, but aren't you still the Niners that you're limited by Jimmy G and your offense? And, you know, uh, what's McCaffrey going to do for you? They played that one game. I think it was against the Cardinals. Or maybe it was the Bucks a little later on. Everyone realized that they were the Yak Kings. Uh, I think McCaffrey, Debo, and Kittle all were leading the NFL at their position at yards after catch, which basically means you have dudes. <laughs> if you get those guys the ball in any fashion... They're going to do something special. And that's all they've done. Um, the question is, they have Brock Purdy playing. He's a seventh-round pick. He's a seventh-round pick out of Iowa State. Um, listed six foot. How about that? Six foot and five-eighths, so we'll give him six one. Um They have arguably one of the best coaches in the NFL, a coach that if you were starting your NFL franchise, you'd take him. Uh, He is basically offense so good that he's become a quarterback whisperer of sorts. Um, And I don't even think it's a Brock... I I don't think you'd say he's a Brock Purdy whisperer. I I think everything else is so good around him that he makes it kind of as easy as it is to play quarterback in the NFL for, (laughs) for as well as I know. Um, they have talent on every level of the defense. 
Um, Bosa is a freak show. Um, Hufunga is awesome to watch. Fred Warner might be the best running back or linebacker in the NFL. They took out the Seahawks. They beat the Cowboys in that uh, kind of funky, ugly game a little bit. They head to Philadelphia to play the Eagles. The Eagles were the darlings uh, of kind of the offseason a little bit. Everyone was like, look out for the Eagles. Like, Hurts has taken a step. They got A.J. Brown to go with Devontae Smith. Um, you know, a lot of talent all over the field. They've rolled all year, man. Um, you know, everyone was worried about their hiccup of they lost at Dallas 40-34. to um, and then they lost to the Saints the next week. But, I'd like to say, but coming into that Dallas game, they were 13-1. and one. They kind of closed the book on the season already. They were good. Like, they did the job. Um, you know, I, I mentioned the, the 49ers. They started off 1-2. and two. The Eagles' final two games, they went 1-2. and two including winning the the one win was that game against the Giants that meant nothing. So who cared? The part of the season that mattered to them, they went 13 and 1. They rolled over the Giants last week, 38 to 7. I've mentally been drinking Niners Kool-Aid. Um just cuz I love I love their dudes so much. Um The Cowboys had a really good game plan against them defensively. Um, And Purdy never made the big mistake from the people that I've listened to talk about football. These teams match up pretty well. Both teams can run the ball. Uh, You know, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Miles Sanders got, like, Philly's got guys. I think the Niners guys are a little better. It never feels like it's this easy, but it kind of feels like it comes down to Hurts versus Purdy. And in Philadelphia, with what Jalen Hurts has done this year, the way he can run and pass the ball, I'm already regretting my bets that I placed on the Niners. Um, I don't know. It feels like it's Philly's game. The storyline for them would be, um, you know, going back to the Super Bowl. You know, same same front office, but a lot of new pieces, obviously. Nick Foles, not there. Doug Peterson, not there. Um, and they have a Kelsey brother. Keep that in mind for storylines. Super Bowl storylines. Um, I just I already told you, DraftKings, I bet it on the I bet it. I bet on the Niners. Um, I believe in their skill positions. I feel like they've been building up for this. I love storylines as well. Their storylines would be Shanahan and the Niners are getting back to the Super Bowl. A rookie quarterback, Brock Purdy. I don't believe a rookie quarterback's ever won the Super Bowl. Sign me up for two weeks of that content. Although Brock Purdy's interview is about as boring as I've seen. And not like trying to be. Not like... Like gotta, Judge is boring by design. Yes. Make, like, he makes a choice to do not that. Not like, got to give credit to my teammates. Like, they got, the guys play great. Like, he was just... Yeah. Again, I... He's I not de- out there just... He's not going to give you a sound bite. He's, I depicted it as um, not believing the dream he's currently living. Um, Sirianni, I guess, is a good head coach. That's the other thing N- nobody knows for sure. Like, Shanahan has... His stripes, Sirianni deserves all the respect for this season, but, like, let's say the Niners went into Philly and they they roll pretty good, 31-14. to 14. Would you be shocked by the Sirianni stuff? I guess I don't know. I'm not in the X's and O's enough. I don't know how, what he has fully proven to us. I know he's done an amazing job with his team. I know where Jalen Hurts has gotten to. I don't know where Sirianni ranks among coaches at all. Yeah. And the the thing about him, people kind of just don't like him, hmm. like a, like outside. 
But that's yeah. good for Philly. That's good for Philly. That's great for, for Philly. Philly. That's ideal that's, for Philly. That's hard for him to get good publicity when it's just like everyone uh, is kind of on. He's a little bit, a little bit of a d bag. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for Philly. Um, so that's the early game. Uh, I'm I'm on Niners gambling wise. I'm, I'm the more I hear and think about it, I'm I'm starting to regret it. I guess let's find out. Hurts and Sirianni. Jalen Hurts, are you really who you've become? Sirianni, should you be talked about with a lot of the good head coaches? Because what he's done with Hurts and that program in Philly, um, I guess I'm I'm gonna rest on my laurels and I'm I'm going Niners. And then Bengals Chiefs, we're running it back in Arrowhead. Burrow Mahomes, I mean N- NFL porn. Uh, who Joe Burrow has now become, what Patrick Mahomes is. Uh, the Chiefs are 14 and three. They are seven and one at home. Their one loss, your Cincinnati Bengals, 27 uh, to 24. Uh, the Bengals defense uh, played really well in that game. Uh, the Chiefs had it. They were up 24 to 17. Cincinnati came back in this game, shut out the Chiefs in the fourth quarter in Arrowhead. Um, and then it went scoreless, uh, like halfway through the fourth quarter. Bengals took the lead on a, on a touchdown. Burrow to Chris Evans, not in my book. Um, I don't know. This one, I am seemingly against. The Chiefs are still the Chiefs in my head. Um, I know Mahomes is hurt. Um, I know it wasn't pretty versus the Jaguars, which aren't a pretty football team when you when you talk about them. Uh, I think they were going to sleepwalk through the Jaguars a little bit because I think they knew on their, on a mediocre day, and I don't think they factored this in, but on a mediocre day with Mahomes with a, a rolled up ankle, they still didn't really have a problem with the Jaguars. I think they've been waiting for this game. All the great athletes are great athletes. They're pissy. They remember everything. I think Mahomes is that guy. I don't think he's going to lose to the Bengals again. That's all I believe in. I think they're going to do it. But everyone is on Burrow and Cincy, man. It's pretty unreal. Um, I, I'm a little shocked by it. Everyone seemingly, the Josh Allen, Joe Burrow thing I've been doing a little bit with that one game. They have now fully gone full Joe Burr and Cincy, which maybe it's just the pendulum going all the way that way. I don't know. But I do think a lot of the NFL minds I listen to are on Cincinnati. But to be one and a half point favorites in Arrowhead with Patrick Mahomes, it just feels dirty. It feels grimy. Maybe all the football stuff is there. No, they're rolling right now. Maybe those old linemen issues that should have been a thing last week, but the Bills D-line not existing. Maybe that comes into play because Chris Jones is one of the best D-linemen in football, and they've got other guys there. I'm not shaking Kansas City. Maybe this is old school. Um, But I'm Kansas City uh, and the Niners. No Kelsey Bowl for me. Uh, Mm. I'm taking out uh, Eagles Kelsey. Uh, Chiefs-Niners rematch. I've got Chiefs Niners rematch. Little storyline there. Um, Bengals Eagles. I don't know, man. That feels a little too like Madden Sim Super Bowl for me. True. I feel like NFL has had a ways. They had that old quarterback graphic when you know Peyton Roethlisberger, uh, Tom. They were in every Super Bowl. Like football, there's hope every year, but somehow the elite teams kind of still roll. I don't know how healthy Mahomes is. Maybe there's two snaps in, and I go, my God. Uh, that's a loser. Chad Henney's out there versus the Bengals. In Arrowhead, the Chiefs are one of the proudest franchises in like all of sports. To lose twice to the Bengals on their home field after losing to them last year, I can't do that. Not with Patrick Mahomes. If you're Patrick Mahomes, you kind of don't let that happen. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, again, that's not very X's and O's. That's just a guy who's watched a lot of sports. Um, so... Enjoy watching the sports this weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, everyone tuning in on AMP. Uh, And we love you guys. Bake it.